this is Shin from the Bitten Apple here at 2019 Anime NYC, here with another inspirational and up-and-coming artist of the furry variety. Hello there. <laughs> uh, my name is Ren Palmer. Uh, I am the primary artist of Beast Horizon Studios. So this is our first anime convention and we are so excited to be here. So what got you into making this kind of uh, honestly, well, I started out sculpting uh, monuments and things for just various online companies. So if you've been to Chicago and you've seen, you know, anyone sculpt a horse, that was by me. Uh, this started as a passion project, something to really uh, kind of unwind on weekends, unleash some like pent up creativity. And over time, it evolved. I realized I kind of love being a giant animal person and making other people giant animal people. So <laughs> nothing wrong with that. More people like that in the world make the world happier. Oh yeah. Honestly, it seems to come from a bit of like millennial escapism. You know, life can be so stressful and there's so many responsibilities, but you can just take a moment to not. You don't have to be part of that. You can be a happy bear, a dog, or whatever you want. Of course. One more question. Yeah, go for it. a personal question. Yeah, go for it. Which of these is your baby? Oh, man. Uh, this one right here. That's my bear. <laughs> So. Yeah, all of those down there are favorites. <laughs> so there are favorites. And oh, absolutely. Yeah, this was the first one I made. Uh, so this is my personal. It was where I kind of like, <laughs> I figured out a lot of the process and was able to kind of use a bit of trial and error to make other things. So, not gonna lie, being, not being a human for a sec, it's kind of a, a really nice relief. Good sanctuary. Yeah. So I've, I found that one of the biggest limitations within character design in the furry community is you have to keep forms relatively simple, because um, if it's simple, it's wearable. However, I figure that there's ways to make complex forms wearable as costumes. So I chose the most difficult thing I could think of, uh, which was a large four-horned goat. Um, and I tried to uh, kind of remedy those uh, like points of difficulty. So for instance, each of these horns is removable with magnets, uh, and it weighs nearly nothing because it's hollow 3D printed form. So there's less weight, uh, they're all able to be removed for like hacking sake, or if there's you know an incident, it won't break, it will just pop off, you put it back on and keep going. So finding uh, solutions to complex problems was really uh, my reason for creating these, this series of horned creatures. So you would say that they help you unpack, unpack complex, and then you create something simple. Oh, that's the idea. I, I absolutely love uh, like tackling complex like structural and mechanical issues. Uh, there's oh they're not even here. Um, there's a series of more like puppeted uh, costumes I did previously that really illustrate that that uh, point. So. Do you have any words of wisdom, nuggets of advice for people who see all of this and say, "Wow, I want to get into this. Should I quit my day job and get immediately into this?" Um. Honestly, it's a pretty uh, involved skill set, but thankfully there's tons of resources <laughs> online nowadays. So I would say, you know, find a project, do a little bit here and there, get a feel, and if it's something that you feel, like, really passionate about, yeah, go for it. Like, Any plans for the future, like branching out and having your own store instead of just a booth? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> um, so right now we're, we're trying to break in from furry to go a bit more anime, cosplay oriented uh, type designs and hopefully onto movies and special effects. So uh, we plan to settle down in Denver and open a studio. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, um, we're headed to JMOF in January. So we'll be vending in Japan uh, and then there's Confuzzled in London. Um, and then we're hoping to get into Thailand as well, so fingers crossed on that one. I wish I had fingers to cross, but I'm hoping for you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So we'll at least be in Tokyo. Uh, we'll be in Tokyo between the 11th to the 13th, I believe. That could be totally wrong. Oh man, I'm so sorry if that is, but yeah. It's amazing. That means if there are any fans watching who are living in Japan, they can check you out. Absolutely. We'll be there. Yeah. Ren, Ren, Beast Horizon, come find me. Uh, JMOF. They may even rock some of your stuff and that will be the new fashion later oh. on in the oh. season. I would love it. <laughs> It'd be so much fun to see people running around the city as animals. Oh. Have, speaking of animals, have you seen that anime Beast Wars? Oh man. Do not get me started. I yeah. <laughs> we're we're planning a full lineup for January of like their main characters. Like I watched it on Netflix and I just fell in love. So anyway, 
Yeah, so that's a bit of a sneak peek. That wasn't supposed to come out yet, but... Well, I guess the viewers are going to be able to get a little bit of a sneak peek. If they're into Beastars, they know yeah. where to go to. Absolutely. Um, you can find us online at BeastHorizon.com or on Twitter and Instagram at both at uh, BeastHorizon. Oh, yeah, just at BeastHorizon. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time and all your wonderful art. And we want to see good things from you in the future, even better things, because we want to hear about you newspapers and see you doing interviews oh, on yeah. TV. Well, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for inviting me. I, I'm absolutely so happy to talk about our work. <laughs>